thought I'd talk a little bit about these loose needles right here uh, and the wrist pin needle bearings that are in a cage. So you have cage type needle bearings like this and these run on your wrist pin. Most people are going to know that if they got it apart this far. But what scared them when it come apart was all these little needles. There's 31 needles in there and the 582 also has these little rings uh, which go on the edges of the needles hanging in there. And this whole assembly with all the needles and rings has to go inside the piston in here while you put the wrist pin through them through the whole mess. And they're probably wondering how in the heck could I do that? And I'd say that's a pretty good question and I'd say that's dang near impossible. Uh, just sticking them in there with grease, a lot of people know that trick, but to hit that and get the wrist pin through there uh, and get all 31 needles in there uh, with the wrist pin through them, sticking them in there with grease, uh, is going to be nigh on impossible to do, I would say, unless you were, you know, going to spend a few months in jail and had nothing else to do but try to figure out how to get that together. So, uh, other one, other thing I wanted to tell you was these needles, there's 31 of them, you want to make sure you count them real careful and that you get them all in there. Uh, the reason being, I'm going to show you a little bit later, as to what that will do uh, to your connecting rod if you happen to be missing one of those needles, what happens. The other thing I wanted to point out is that these loose needles, what they call uncaged needles, you might say, well, that's a cheap way of doing it. Well, it probably is cheap, but there's a reason for it. Uh, this is a caged bearing, and it only has uh, 16 needles in there. So you got 31 here and only 16 here. And the force on the needles is just line contact, a straight line on that needle where it runs across whatever it's against, whether it's the wrist pin on the inside, it's what they call line contact, just one line across there. Well, you don't have near as many lines when you use one of these things as you do when you have the loose needles. There's a whole lot more of them in there. So this gives you a lot more bearing surface. This wouldn't work for a lot of bearings if it's a high-speed bearing that's, you know, rotating. You don't have a rotation when you're using using it on the wrist pin because the only thing the connecting rod does is is uh, swing back and forth just a few degrees is all it's doing like this so it's going to wear just in a small area like that and it will wear grooves in in here the needles could wear grooves in here and uh, what's really bad is the connecting rod the wrist pins are cheap these are centerless ground you can get those really cheap uh, and I think these are relatively cheap. The snowmobile shops have these. But I wouldn't advise using one of these in an aircraft engine uh, if you can possibly help it because uh, although they're easy to put in and you don't have any trouble getting the uh, wrist pin to go through there, uh, they're not the best thing to use. So uh, I'm going to try to show you the reason why you don't want to have a needle missing if you're using uncaged needles like this, why you don't want them missing, and how I'm going to put these together with these needles on there. I've seen some videos. There's people that have done it, but they seem to be a lot more ambidextrous than I am. I, I'm too shaky and too old, and uh, uh, the dangers of losing a needle or dropping one down in the engine or dropping one on the floor and being missing a needle are kind of great. Uh, because, and I'm going to show you the reason why you want to make sure they're all in there. And uh, I'll do that out in the garage in a minute. I said I would tell you why it is you don't want to assemble this small end of the rod without having all those needles. And the reason is you can really damage this rod uh, really bad. Uh, if you can envision these needles in there, say, say this screwdriver here was a needle, if you didn't have enough of them in there, if it, if it wasn't fully full of needles, there'd be a possibility of them racking in there. They could skew like this, the whole rack of them. 
Well, then I suppose you can see here the it's not making contact in the center of this rod bearing. This is exaggerated, of course. They wouldn't go that far, but it shows you the idea that it's going to put more pressure on the edges of the connecting rod in, in this hole. It's going to put wear out here on the edges. And conversely, of course, it's going to put more pressure on the center of your wrist pin if you do that. And that pressure can cause those needles to break. And if they break, you're going to get a bunch of metal crumbs in here that's going to tear up this bearing. So not only will it be worn bad in there, it'll be all tore up from the broken needles and probably damage your wrist pin as well. But of course, wrist pins don't cost that much. But uh, this is a big problem. If you mess this up, then you need a, to get a new crank or a rebuilt crank. I don't know if the aftermarket rods are as good as these. These are heat treated really well. I think they wear quite good. So uh, anyways, uh, what I'm going to show you is how I put it back together. A lot of people, they get stumped when they, all those needles fall out of there and they get pretty scared. Now I want to make the point while I'm doing this, I always put rags in this crankcase. I see a lot of people working on these things that don't have any rags in there and that's really a bad thing to do even if you were working on an engine somewhere just close to this thing something could fly over here and go down in there and then when you start up this engine uh, it's going to be a mess so what I did is I smeared a little bit of white grease in this bearing and I've got the rags so in case I drop a needle or something goes flying it won't go in the crankcase and I'm laying these needles in there and it's pretty easy with grease I like grease I've seen people put them together without grease but I think grease makes them stick a little bit and I I kinda like that after I get about oh halfway around in there then I'm gonna use a tool here uh, let's see what I do with it Oh, right here uh, this tool is basically a dummy wrist pin. Uh, the, I've seen people make wrist pins and take a chop saw and cut them off. If they get them just the right length, you can use a wrist pin, an old wrist pin as a, as a, a dummy wrist pin, but uh, I just got one I made special for doing this. So I lay this in there as a dummy wrist pin and that allows me to keep adding these needles until I get all 31 of them in there. And, uh, the grease kind of puts a little drag on them and makes them stay in there. I hope you can see that camera that all the needles are in there they go all the way around and there's no empty gaps it's all full of needles now now with a 503 or 447 that's usually all I required and I put the piston on there and you put the wrist pin in and it drives this dummy wrist pin out but on this 582 for some reason they've decided they need these little spacer rings in there so they go on each side like that and that's one of the things that makes it really hard to get the wrist pin in there so now I want to put the piston on so first I check to see uh, which is the exhaust side now this this is where the water pump is I don't know if you can see but this side's where the water pump is but this piston uh, I want to put the the water pump side in there and that's that's going to be on the exhaust side is going to be over here because the water pumps over here uh, some of these engines are different some of them have the carburetor and 
you know the water pump and exhaust are on the same side so uh, water pump exhaust and carburetor so what this does now to help me is I've got my dummy wrist pin in there I have a a pin here that I made so that I can put this piston right down I, I don't know if that's going to show I may probably need more light but I put that over there like that and this has a pin and the pin goes into my dummy I can't see what I'm doing because of the camera here it goes into into my dummy uh, wrist pin in there so now the, the pistons on there but and it'll stay on there and the needles will stay in there but I'm ready to slide the new wrist pin in and when you push this through there both these snap rings are out it's gonna push that tool right out of there and I'm making these tools and selling them I, I, I don't know that anybody else has something like that but I, I think it's a good idea to teach people how to do it because these needles are much better than the caged needle it's gonna you've doubled your your amount of support uh, you've got more rolling elements in there and it's better for the the action that you get on this thing which is just a little motion like this when it's running so uh, the caged bearings are good but they don't take the load that the uncaged bearings will so <clears throat> anyways uh, that's what this tool does now I just will push this through and that will take that tool out of there uh, and that's how I put it together it's, it's really pretty easy to do and it doesn't take very long it takes longer doing it with a camera but now make sure that the piston you put on this one is marked with a P that's my mark my stamp on the top with a P this is a PTO side and of course my little transfer ports on this side so I know it goes on the rotary valve side of the piston this is the exhaust side and uh, so the pistons on there the right way but I did want to tell you about inside this hole if you get any burrs or if trying to dig that circlip out of there you make a bung in there or something you got to get some emery cloth on your finger and get in there and polish that out to where the wrist pin slides in there real easy now what I'm going to do to make it a little easier this is just a trick that I use but a lot of people do it is uh, this thing here is uh, what they call a heat gun it looks like a hair blow dryer but it gets a lot hotter than that and I'm going to heat up this piston so that I can put the wrist pin in there real easy I got that hot enough to where I can't really keep my hand on the piston it's just a little too hot to keep your hand on that means it's at least 140 degrees I'm gonna wear a glove so I can hold on to it now I'm gonna take this wrist pin which I put a little bit of lubricant on you can use two-stroke oil or whatever you have handy and I'm gonna tap that wrist pin in there and when I do this little tool the fake or the dummy uh, wrist pin and my locating pin come out on the other side ready to do the next next job so that's how I install the wrist pins in there and uh, like I say the the loose uh, these these loose needles is a better bearing that'll carry way more load double the load that, that these will and uh, if you're running around at high RPM all the time it'd probably be a pretty good idea uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you was the uh, you know when I do this I usually wear that glove for the heat and what I used for lubricating the wrist pin was this this is ZEP 45 but it's just a light lubricant like TriFlow or something like that to help it slide easy and you can see it goes in there 
pretty easy but you have gotta make sure you don't have any burrs or bungs in that hole before you try to push that pin through there and uh, I guess that's about all I got to tell you on that I'm ready to do the next one but I do want to make sure people cover up these holes actually I should have coals you know some something covering these holes here because uh, something could go down in there you'd be surprised how unlucky I am sometimes when I'm working on stuff you can use paper towels too like I stuffed a paper towel in here in the water jacket that works too but once I get the wrist pin and everything in there then it'll be safe to take these out probably and put the cylinders on.